On tonight's Words From My Face, we're talking about how Russia might be banning movies. We're talking PAX Prime and Amazon Pilot Season. Stay tuned. Please, please stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> That's right. He is terrorizing Brendan right now. Because I was at work all day, and so he was like, I'm bored. Let me go mess with Brendan. Yeah, yeah, this was a, a fun and terrifying Labor Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fun and terrifying. <laughs> you, you can't have one without the other with Chewbacca. Actually, you can. You can have just a terrifying day with Chewbacca. I tell you Usually that. it is just a terrifying day. And I, I really include the fun part so that he doesn't terrify me more. Yeah, so, so yeah. Yeah, so that's that's great. Well, I hope everybody out there had a good Labor Day. I don't really know what Labor Day is for. I guess it's for anybody who works. So the fact that I had to go to work on Labor Day is kind of messed up. Yeah. You know why? Because all of you people. (laughs) You people? What do you mean, you people? All you people out there who want to buy your stuff all the day you have off. (laughs) So, uh, so any any of those people, if you fit in that category, it's your fault. I got to bring my finger up. It never gets in the camera, right? But yeah, so um, let's start this week out. Almost the same way we start out every week. And I say almost because there's going to be a little bit of a twist here. Now, somebody in the show watched a horrible movie. That someone was not me, though. So, yes. Brendan watched the horrible movie of the week this week. What movie did you watch this week, Brendan? This week, listener Scott sent and suggested The Nut Job. The Nut Job. Well, thank you, Scott. You like to torture us both uh, very frequently. We appreciate it. Kind of. <laughs> so. Now, here's... Yeah, I'll, I'll get into it. Now, here's the fun thing about The Nut Job. It's pretty much a, a kid's movie, so, you know, okay. they're, they're, what, what's your standards on it, right? Um, I looked at it, too. I was looking on, on Netflix, of course, and it had decent ratings. It had, like, four-star rating. Um, mm, doesn't really mean much on Netflix most times. Honestly, too, I was looking through a bunch of movies, and I kept seeing movies that I knew were at least highly acclaimed that I necessarily didn't necessarily think it was the greatest, but they were getting two stars. And other movies I knew were crap, they were getting four stars. I think I saw Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunter, on one of the streaming services had four stars too. And I was like, what? Nope, that what? definitely made a horrible movie of the week. <laughs> so. That was one of the worst horrible movies. Uh, but so anyway, so I delved in. I dived in because uh, cause it was su- suggested by Scott that it was a horrible movie. And let's put it this way. There's, there's tears of children's family movies, as it were. Ones that you can watch with the whole family and everyone has a good time. Now, at the top of those, you have your movies like Shrek. Yeah. Great, great quality movie, right? Mm -hmm. Um, How to Train Your Dragon. Kung Fu Panda. Both of those entertaining movies. A lot of those are from DreamWorks, interestingly enough, but there's other ones out there that are quality family movies that everyone can really get into. Um, the nut job, not so much. Like, <laughs> not so much. Uh, I could see kids kids liking it. I could see them getting the, the four stars. Um, because it has animals that run around, <laughs> okay. and they do some like slapstick humor and things like that. Like, I could see. Oh, look, furry animals running around. But if you want to delve into the story and understand something. You're 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 trying too hard. Like now, some people don't care, but I'm I'm saying like it's rather striking, of 
why did these things happen? <laughs> is the con the question constantly going through your mind? Why does this character care about what's going on? Like seriously, why do I care about what's going on? The whole story. The main character revolves... doesn't care. Why should I? Yes, um, the whole story revolves around. Hey, we need to get food for the for the park, right? Okay, that that seems like a big deal for for a bunch of animals. They need to have food, but um, there are players in it that aren't part of that whole thing, and it's like, why do they care? Sometimes they say they don't care, and then you have to wonder to yourself, why does anyone expect them to care? But yeah. but let's let me let me illustrate this. The big early conflict is stealing a bunch of nuts. It's a nut job, right? Okay, Theft. so so stealing a bunch of nuts from a street vendor. Hey, that sounds reasonable enough. Um, and there's a rogue group. Unless named... you're the street vendor. It's not yeah. reasonable to the street vendor. Uh, the street vendor's a jerk anyway. <laughs> All right, screw uh, him. <laughs> no, he, he, he is a jerk. He randomly decides that instead of selling nuts to a little girl, he's going to stuff nuts in her mouth. And, again, you ask why. Like, okay, you find out later this street vendor's not a real vendor. He's, you know, scouting out a bank for, for a heist. So there's this, like, dual thing going on that doesn't really work out, by the way, of, oh, they're going to steal some nuts from guys that are going to rob a bank. So there's two people, like, trying to steal stuff. Are they, okay. like, animal Robin Hoods? <laughs> stealing? Except for they're not. And uh, no one in this, like... I think the the idea is you don't want they didn't want people to feel bad about these animals robbing these people blind of a whole bunch of their livelihood so they're like oh well, these are bad guys they're they're you know criminals trying to rob a bank but they don't go and they don't make the guys into that big of a jerks like okay they're robbing a bank they're not trying to hurt anyone doing it I I, I get it you know rob bank that's bad but. You're robbing this guy too. You still have some characters that have no idea that they're robbing banks, and they're just trying to rob them of all their nuts. Like, come on. Now. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like they they're like, okay, we want to get from point A to point D, so we'll figure out C, B and C later. Yeah, yeah, and and along the way too, like they they set the main character up as kind of a jerk, right? Uh, he he doesn't care about anyone else. He's not part of the the uh, the park politics, and they're Meth their system of oh we all gather food together we have our justice system which for some reason they have a justice system and they're very dedicated to it. Of course you need um, a justice system in the park. Yeah, um, but here's here's the the interesting part about it. He's clearly not part of that group, right? And he says so, and he says I'm independent the whole time, and he avoids everyone else as much as possible and tries to get his own food. But somehow, after a few big things, they have jurisdiction to kick him out of the park. Like, they can exile him under their judicial system that he already rejects. Okay. It doesn't seem now, part of. Now, this might sound redundant, but are these a bunch of homeless people that live in the park, or are these animals that live in the park? These are animals that live in the park. Okay. Okay. So It'd be cooler if it was homeless people that lived in the park. That's the other thing. They never try to get food for the homeless people. They, they never show it. There's clearly no homeless people in this city or in this movie. Well, hey, maybe that's... They, they're in a utopia where all you have to worry about is stealing nuts. Yeah. Yeah, and, and rats, apparently, because rats are evil. Other than the rat that is the guy's friend. <laughs> all rats are evil, except for that guy. Yeah, that was the other thing. Like, the guy gets exiled. He goes out, and suddenly some rats see him, and, of course, they want to k kill him because they're rats. Yeah, and he knows this, too. Animal. He knows immediately I should be afraid of any rat that I see. Because they're clearly bad cartels that just kill people at random. They're like the, the Los Zetas of, of, of rats. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, they, they show up and, and they want to kill him. It's like, there, there was no transition there. There was no, oh, he looked at him funny. Uh, he to he's encroaching on their food supply. There's nothing. Just, oh, look, rats. Rats want to kill a squirrel. <laughs> No, hey. That's how it goes. Uh, but that's how it goes over and over. Why is this happening? Why does the guy care about uh, about the ruling of this uh, judicial group that he already rejects and already avoids and is already a criminal from anyway? Why does he have to accept banishment? Why can't he just run around like he had been doing the entire time? Uh, it, it just this feels time like it's picked. Stuck. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, you know, why does everyone care about giving them chances? Why do they set up this one character that you expect is going to be a jerk hero, right? They have another hero of the park who's a little bit arrogant, right, and like the pretty boy, and usually you expect that to be, okay, so he's going to be the bad guy. He's not the bad guy. There's nothing bad about him. He's just stupid. That, that's it. Mm. But he does stuff. I, it's like, what? what is the point of this character? I say that all over and over, too. What is the point of this character in this movie? He has nothing. Oh, oh, great! Now that there's a hero dynamic that people can uh, can give credit to, but he's not a. I, I don't feel bad about them giving credit to him for things that he doesn't even do. Just he's not trying to take credit. He doesn't know what's going on half the time. He's just like, oh, okay, yep, I saved <laughs> the day, I guess. And he's nice to the other guy too. Like he's nice to the the the, the villain guy who's really the hero. So. Come on now, give me some conflict there. There's no tension between those two, really. It's like, whatever. It's like, what's the point of these characters? And again, what's the point of this heist? What's the point of the, the bank heist? You know, there's a, a supposed to be a subplot going on. They allude to it. There's a romantic interest going on with this subplot that shows up. And there's this conflict that the guy gets out of jail. And maybe he's going to clean up, but maybe he doesn't. Fishy guy with him, right? Maybe the guy's going to double-cross him. None of that plays up to anything. They have one scene about the, the guy and the girl, and she finds out that he's uh, going to rob this bank. And she says, well, I guess you're going to do what you're going to do. But then at the end of the movie, she says, something is missing, by the way. She says, I can't believe you did this. Now I'm going to get the police on you. It's like, you knew this was happening. <laughs> you saw this coming. What is your problem? <laughs> but it's like, why, why, why is she upset now? She knew. She heard about this half an hour ago. Okay, half an hour of the movie. So three days before, she knew that this heist was going <laughs> down. Why too is she upset too now? Late. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why are you upset now? Why are they robbing the bank right now? Why immediately after getting out of jail does he decide let me rob, rob a bank right now while people are probably looking for me? Right. You know, mm -hmm. don't you still have a parole officer? Isn't there still suspicion of you opening a business across the street from a bank? Well, <laughs> with with some random associate guy who's apparently hears dog whistles. Mm. And why is is he going to turn out to be a double crosser? He's not really. Like at the end when everyone's already been double crossed, maybe he is, but like well what was the point of that character? To to blow dynamite and to get angry about dog whistles? That's really all he does. He throws Sounds dynamite like and movie. gets angry about dog whistles. Why do I care? Why? Why that's why I kept asking, care? why? Why do these things Maybe happen? That's the question. Why don't you care? Huh? A, Are you a nihilist? Biggest, do you care about the nothing? Why. The big central twist in the whole movie is that the leader of the park, this raccoon guy, is actually vying to just control the animals by controlling the food supply, by artificially making a scarce uh, food supply. Ooh, okay. Hey, that, that sounds interesting. But why is he doing it? He says... He gets more control that way, but for what purpose? Apparently, all he cares about are shiny things, because he's a raccoon, right? The animals never get him shiny things. <laughs> he's not going to get it from them anyway. Them. Only once does he get shiny things from the animals, and that's from the bird that's with him, who's already in on his plans. Hmm. He can have that bird go get him shiny things, okay? <laughs> At any point. At any point, <laughs> you can go get shiny things. There, there's... In fact, this whole food scarcity thing is detrimental to his plan. They already elected him a leader, apparently. He could have them, once they have all the food supply, go get them shiny, him shiny things. But no, 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 no. Now they have to just waste all their time looking for food that they don't need instead of getting him shiny things. Huh. So why is he doing this? <gasps> why? <laughs> uh, that seems like to be the question of the movie, is why. But... Then the final biggest why, and this is a strange one, because this is probably the best part of the movie, but simultaneously the most confusing part of the movie, and you don't usually think about it in this context. The ending credits. The ending credits... <laughs> that was the best part of the movie? You're like, thank God the credits are here. <laughs> the ending credits have the, uh, the famous Korean rapper Psy in them hmm. performing Gangnam Style. 
Psy never makes a cameo in this movie. I think it's set in like probably the 40s anyway. Um, why is Psy dancing around the credits? I don't know. Why is he singing the song part of the time, but most of the time he's not? Like, well, why couldn't they choose one? What is he doing here? It was fun. It was entertaining. Hey, look, Psy, he's doing the, the Gundam style dance with all the characters. Open Gundam style. Yeah. But, but why why is he in here? Other than so that they could use his song. They could have used his song anyway. Like he has nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> they just like, oh, let's throw let's throw Psy in here in this oh, animal movie about robbing stuff. But yeah. 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 So that was the nut job. Um uh, what do you rate me? Honestly, uh, I'm not going to say it's the worst movie in the world. But, so I get to watch um, all the worst movies in the world. Thanks, Brindy. But it wasn't a great movie, and it definitely like left me not satisfied. Okay. Like, the whole time, I was thinking, I'm, I'm not horribly displeased, other than all these why questions of things making no sense of why things are transitioning the way they are. Um, but at the same time, I, I wasn't in pain. I wasn't in pain, and I wasn't pleased. Okay, so like, that sounds to me like we need to get you more horrible movies of the week. Because after I watch a horrible movie, I usually feel this like vacant emptiness inside myself. Well, I had Psy dancing around on screen for me, which, again, even though it made no sense, it had no connection to with the movie. <laughs> but at least they let you he off was, on a good note. <laughs> yeah, I mean, had Psy dancing around on screen. I mean, yes, I could have just watched uh, Gundam Style again instead. Uh, you know, or 10,000 times during the course yeah. of this movie, but yeah, whatever. But what, but what's, so what's I, your final verdict? What are you rating it? I'm gonna give it. Uh, I, I'd give it two and two and a half Chewbacca chainsaws. Wow, so it's actually one of the better rated movies we've had too. Yeah. So maybe we need to have you not watch another like horrible movie of the week and Scott quit giving them softballs. Yeah, I mean maybe maybe it's that I just rate things differently than you because I think I still think two and a half is pretty crappy. It, it's, it's not a five. Of, well, yeah, but still four and above. That's that's where I think our our quality movies three is. Yeah, I go three and I a half. Out of. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'll give it to him. All right, I'll so two and a half, half out of. Uh... <laughs> okay, I was waiting for the chainsaw there, but that was only the half of the sound effects. Yeah. So, well, so thank you, Brendan, for uh, alleviating some of that uh, torture that I tend to heap on myself every week. And, uh, yeah, I hate horrible movies of the week, but I love them at the same time because they give us a segment that takes, like, 15 minutes. Yay. And, oh, all Ooh. at the same time. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, so, well, so, I'm in a better mood just because I didn't have to watch said horrible movie of the week. But let's move it on because there's some movie news talking about. Now, we usually don't jump into stories like this, but I just thought it was interesting we could have some fun with it. And that is because Russia... They have a ban on their parliament floor. I think that's what they call it as their parliament. Um, uh, a bill to ban foreign movies that portray Russians or Russia in a negative light. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I kind of want to talk a little bit about that because really if you look at movies, especially American movies, which Hollywood makes more movies than anywhere else in the world, like our main bad guy is Russia. At least for a long time. There's a Definitely during the Cold War era, that was pretty mm-hmm. true. It still shows up quite a bit. Like ninety so. percent of like like I I want to say almost ninety percent of James Bond villains were Russia. Were, were Russians, you know. <laughs> he was he was always getting out there. So you're gonna ban all those probably. Um, yeah, all the Jack Ryan things like Clear and Pleasant Danger. No, that was that was an it. Yeah, definitely era, that's man. the big thing for a lot of the the Jack Ryan movies. Um, you know, uh, Red October, the Hunt for Red October, right? Whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Hunt for Red October. Uh, well, actually, Hunt for Red October was kind of like a Russian that Sean Connery was like a good Russian. He was trying to save him somehow. Um, you yeah, kind of, but the rest of Russia was considered to be crappy. Well, yeah. Like there is a good Russian, but the rest of Russia. <laughs> <laughs> you have one good Russian. That is it. The rest of Mother Russia. What made him good was that he didn't like the rest of Russia or something like that. He was like disobeying orders or something. Yeah, I guess that's true. So that movie's probably bad. But, you know, like, what's going to happen? Like, I guess I understand. Russia is tired of seeing themselves portrayed as the world's bad guys. 
But that's because you kind of still are the world's bad guys. I mean, terrorists have kind of taken over that, but... Uh, I don't believe the foreign propaganda. <laughs> the whole uh, communism thing didn't really didn't really help you guys out too much. Even though communism not... All right, I'm sorry. I was about to get into the whole political rant. We don't need to talk about that. But well, I just... You know what? Hold on. Before we go too much further, how many movies do, do we see that shows America and bad light the way that we see Russia like that. Well, I mean, we have plenty of movies, especially after the Cold War, like you said, where it's like an American who's like, oh, we need to keep war going, so I'm going to start a war here. I mean, I can think of like four or five movies with that type of plot. Uh, I mean, but, but usually they're they're against the uh, grain of the U.S. Like, the only one I can think of where it's somewhat with the grain, but somewhat against um, you know, the Nixon, movies with Nixon in it, right? Nixon's portrayed as the evil bad guy, and he is the leader, right? But at the same time, the whole idea is all Americans really hate Nixon now and didn't like what he was doing, so it's not... I, well, I mean, you've seen movies with, like, the rogue CIA agent who's out there, you, you know, just but they're black good. ops. He's the rogue agent. He's not the, the, oh, this is what he was supposed to be doing. That's true. That's true. And 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 just to be fair, Americans do some pretty do, dirty stuff. So I'm not saying we're yeah, bad. But how Russia, many movies but we do, do we do our, our fair so share? Bad. The only ones that I can think of are actually... Uh, the only one that I can think of that's a foreign movie that shows us as kind of in a negative light often enough. Um, not even that bad. We're kind of... Kind of wants to pick it up. You know, kind of give you a sampling of what your story is going to be all about. Um, and so this year... Uh, they have released their pilot season. Now, I believe they're doing two or three three votes. What you do is they put out five pilots, and you vote on which one you want to be made into a series. So I always like that idea. Um, it's really, really cool. This this time around, uh, they have done five new shows. One of them, Hand of God, that has Ron Perlman in it. He's pretty, pretty cool in it. Ron Perlman from Hellboy, Sons of Anarchy, all those shows. They also have Red Oaks. That was a little lesser known. Nobody really well-known in that one. Uh, you have Hysteria, and you have Really. Um, really is actually the one done by Jay Chandahaskar, and that's one of the Broken Lizard guys, the guys from Super Trooper, you know, and all those movies. Um, and I watched one of them last night. I did watch Hand of God with Ron Perlman. Eh, it was all right. He's kind of, like, kind of takes place of a judge who's a really corrupt judge that all of a sudden goes crazy because his son shot himself and his son shot himself because his wife got raped in front of him, and is and and nobody could find the killer. So it's or not killer rapist. So it, it's kind of a convoluted story, but not bad. Okay, okay, I can. I can and I saw I that it, it really wasn't bad. And apparently, like God tells him to become a vigilante, which is how they describe it, but that doesn't really happen that way. He becomes it sounds a more like the guy went crazy. Yeah, he's going crazy. Like he, like they, they have this really creepy, like born again church that he goes to, and he was baptized. And like the very first scene in the show, he's like speaking in tongues in a water fountain, like totally naked. And a cop picks him up, realizes he's this famous judge, and you know, kind of pushes everything under the rug. So it was, it was interesting. There's a lot of violence. Um, they kind of leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger because. He doesn't want to do any of the violence, but then he finds somebody who he can convince to do the violence for him. And this he's was a okay guy. With that. Yeah, he's he's totally cool with that. Uh, he actually the guy was in his court and he let him off on like an assault charge, and then found him later and was like, okay, so I let you off because you have to do God's work because this guy's again he's a born again too. So there's a lot of born agains in this, and it doesn't really give them a good reputation. So yeah, not all people are like that, by the way. <laughs> if you didn't know. TV is fake, <laughs> but um, including yeah. streaming TV on the including internet, including streaming TV, and uh, yeah, so they go through their things. So that it was interesting. I bet you, out of the five shows, that's the one that's going to be picked up. And I know I only said four shows, and that's because the fifth one sounded so stupid. I remember when I was looking at it last night, I didn't even feel like it was worth mentioning. Uh, the other shows that are out there, Red Oaks. Brian, I want to know now. Well, yeah, I, I'm not going to find it out, so this, hit us up. This is the Streisand effect. Now that's going to be the move that gets it on, because you wouldn't tell us what it is. You don't <laughs> have to watch I didn't it talk now. About. But yeah, so the, what, another show was Red Oaks. Uh, that one actually looked pretty funny. It's kind of like a Caddyshack, but instead of being in a golf course, they're at a tennis club. So 
it, you know, it's a teenager who gets a job as an assistant tennis pro and shenanigans happen. So that, that one looks entertaining. Hysteria is kind of another weird horror virus is spreading type type show. I believe Mina Suvari is in that one, so she's a pretty big name actress. Honestly, and we have then, enough of those. Yeah, Strain was enough. I, I'm not a big fan of horror movies, let alone virus movies, especially with the Ebola outbreak. This isn't a movie, though. It's the whole series, too. I'm sorry. So. I, I, mean, I meant series, yeah. So, yeah, series. We're done with those. And then there's a, one really which was about it's like a stupid couples comedy, so no thanks. I'm, I'm done with those two. Actually, I never started with those. You can't be done with something you never started. I just never wanted to do those. Okay. That's I think really has potential. I don't even know anything <laughs> about it, because you didn't tell me anything about it. But. Yeah, Jay Chanda Heskar. That's the guy from uh, Broken Lizard. The Super Troopers guy. He, he directs it and writes it, so... Is it a comedy couples thing? So yeah, stupid, yeah. stupid couples comedy. Isn't that... Yeah, that's what it is. Stupid. I, I, it doesn't say stupid in theirs, but I wrote stupid in mine. So. Okay. But, that means... <laughs> but yeah. They, they so, did a lot of comedies last time, too, though. Like, yeah, that actually I mean, true. Like, three... Most of the majority of these seem to be comedies. Like, uh, I think Alpha House was one of the ones that got picked up from doing these pilot seasons, and that was awesome. I really enjoyed that show. That had John Goodman, and, yeah, he was the biggest actor, but that was about the... Uh, the the Republican senators that all lived in the same house, so which was, it was really cool. If you haven't seen that, you have Amazon Prime. Check out Alpha House; that it's really good. Uh, but yeah, so those are this batch of Amazon pilot season. But really, what I'm excited about is the next batch of Amazon pilot season, and that is because Patrick Warbutton. If you don't know him, he's Putty from Seinfeld. He's also Joe's voice in. Um, Family Guy, he is going to be reprising his role as the live-action Tick. Wow, they're picking Tick up again? Well, for a pilot. For a pilot. Yeah, yeah, but I honestly, I heard people really like that. I saw maybe an episode of that back in the day. Um, I'm just surprised at how big a deal the Tick is. And I'm surprised that they're picking it up again because they only lasted a season, right? Like it, it was canceled last, real quick. It lasted nine episodes, <laughs> so it didn't even make a whole season. But it did have some critical acclaim. A lot of people did like it, like you said. A lot of people loved it. There was the, kind of the cult following to it. So they're actually bringing it back because uh, Patrick Warbutton actually convinced, I believe Sony still had the rights to it, or Fox, one of the two, convinced them, hey, can I just do this pilot thing with them? I really want to do this again. And they're like, eh, whatever, go ahead. And so you're going to so, see that in the next season. What about Amazon Firefly? Pilot. Firefly? Well, that was an amazing show. And I know. why. If we're they gonna, just need we're to make another movie. Back, I'd, I'd get Firefly back. Oh, yeah, that's true. Firefly is way now. better than The Tick. <laughs> way better than The Tick. I mean, the movie was cool. Like, you can't really go back now because they made the movie, and that gave you a lot of closure for a lot of things, killed off a couple characters. Whatever, reboot no the series. Reboot the series, but you have to bring back Nathan Fillion. If you don't have him in it, it's not the Firefly. Or do do Firefly the next generation. No, no, no. Again, has to have Nathan Fillion in it. Fine, he can show up. As a main character? Yeah, he'll, he'll guide the new crew to a new Good. exploit. Good. As long as he's in it, like I said, Nathan Fillion is my favorite character with that. I I like that show Castle just because he's in it. It's a good show too. But I just that's the primary reason. Anything he's in, he actually did the voice of the Flash in one of those Justice League movies. I believe it was Justice League Doom, one of the cartoons, and that was the best Flash voice I've ever heard in my life. I love Nathan Fillion. He should be in everything. Everything. So what we're saying okay. is, Tick fans, if you have Nathan Fillion in there, great. it might be good. Great for you, Tick fans. But where's Firefly? Come on exactly. now. Yeah, I'm with you there. Was another just another Firefly show. movie. Just canceled. another movie. Serenity is still uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, and I watched that movie before I saw the TV show. So bring out another movie. That'd be cool too. Yeah. So that's just what's going with the, the Amazon on. pilot season. Let us know if you saw any of those mov- those shows. I keep calling them movies. If you see, saw any of those shows, hit us up. Let me de- know in the comments down below what's the best one. Did I watch the best one when Hand of God or some of the other ones good? Which one are you voting for? Hit us up at Words for My Face on Twitter, at Words for My Face at gmail.com, not at Words for My Face at gmail.com, just Words for My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. And that'll roll us over into the quick hits of the night. Remix.
All right, and here's the first quick hit. And that is Charlie Hunnaman has signed on to play King Arthur in Guy Ritchie's first of six-part King Arthur series. Charlie Ooh. Hunnaman, the actor from uh, Sons of Anarchy, uh, I think he's going to be pretty cool in this role because he's actually really British, so it'll be interesting. As opposed to a fake Brit? Yeah, I, I don't think it sounds right. Just like I don't like it necessarily when a British person puts on an American accent, because you can always kind of tell a little bit. Some of them are really good at it, and you can't tell as much. But it's always a little weird. And just like it's weird for an American to put on a British accent, it just throws me off a little bit. I'd prefer them to just cast their, the right people. And Charlie Hunnam is like the character. time that they all were like everyone putting on a Russian accent, like they did in that one K9 that was like awkward. Russian accents. <laughs> Awkward Russian accents, but yeah. So let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Left 4 Dead 2 unedited version. It's actually cleared the Australian censors. Now you might be like, oh, so who cares? Nothing gets through the Australian censors. The fact that this game made it through is amazing. Australia is known for censoring everything. Nothing that they let through. Any type of violence in video games they usually cut out. Well, they, they're known for not letting a lot of movies. Yeah, it's just interesting. I, I just thought that was because that's one of the most violent, gory games you can get. And then the yeah, unedited yeah, version. Zombie. You're not killing real people, right? So that is true. That is true. Maybe but that's still. maybe that's their distinction. Maybe that's enough for them. <laughs> You're killing real people here and zombies over here. So we'll go with zombies. But or yeah. maybe Australia is really afraid of a zombie apocalypse coming, so they need to prepare their population for killing zombies. <laughs> this is how you get ready for the zombie apocalypse. Play Left 4 Dead 2, unedited version. So hey, let's move it on. <laughs> That's true. Let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is Wesley Snipes is set to return for Blade 4. The blade that nobody wanted, but you're getting anyway. No, 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 no. We wanted it, okay? Blade 3 was horrible, man. I don't care. We wanted Blade 4, because no, as bad as Blade 3 was, have you seen the vampire movies since then? Oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, please come back to the play. <laughs> Bring back the real vampires, yeah, the not those Twilight twinkling... series. That's that. Yeah, we we don't need any like shiny vampires. We want real vampires that die in the sun. And the way and they, honestly, the vampires too, would die was so cool. I've always said like it doesn't make sense that the Twilight series uh, and like Edward whatever were as popular as they were as vampires when Blade wasn't getting this attention because he was. Everything everyone wanted, plus a real, real vampire-ish, and badass, like yeah. actually cool. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Blade one and two are are some of the most awesome movies, especially if you like vampire genre. So, yeah, I agree with you there. Badass. Yes. Awesome. So let's move it on to the last quick kid. And that is Guardians of the Galaxy has turned in another week in a row. I believe this is third week in a row. They've been out for five weeks, three of the five, or no, four weeks. Three of the four weeks, it's been number one in the box office. Uh, it was number one this weekend with 17 million. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 came in number. Um, I said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came in number two with 11 million, and If I Stay clocks in with number three with nine million. So that's your wow. box office weekend. And if I stay look stupid, don't watch it. Go watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Guardians of the Galaxy. Both excellent movies. I would say Guardians was a little bit more entertaining than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But can't go wrong either way. But that was our quick hits of the night. All right. So let's, let's move this on to our last story of the evening. And that is... PAX Prime happened, people. So I'm just going to run down some of our favorite things that happened at PAX Prime. If you don't know what PAX Prime is, it is sponsored by Penny Arcade. Really cool website um, that you can go to. They have a lot of game news. They actually have a bunch of games up there. They have a really cool mini-series, like Precipice of Darkness, I believe is what it's called. Um, yeah, so the most famous for their webcomic, uh, the Penny Arcade webcomic, which I, I think it's still the biggest uh, webcomic in the world. I know it was for a long time. And it's an awesome one. I like it. They've branched out. They do other stuff now, too, which are also awesome, like uh, The Trenches. I love that one. Nah. But it's about QA, which I used to do, so that partiality. Nah. So. Yeah, but Penny Penny Arcade is just... They started their PAX series um, just to kind of be a little bit more open 
then you get with the E3s, because E3 started closing itself off to the public, and so they kind of wanted to open themselves up to the public. Well, well, also, PAX was not originally about, like, revealing games. It was about people that are that love games getting together and saying, like, hey, we love games. So they do more than just, like, new games like E3. They'll, they'll have the history of gaming. They'll have panels about gaming people and whatever. They'll, it's more than just a sales thing. It's a convention for fans. Yeah, for fans it's, that it's, love gaming. Here, you love this, we love this, let's show you what we got in the yeah. oven. You know, and, and, and it benefits charity. Really cool idea. Oh, well, it benefits their charity, the, uh, the Child's Play charity. That's oh. even better. You can't, you can't beat that. So let's just jump into some of the stories. Now, there's a bunch of stuff that happened, but these are just some of the stories that we thought was the coolest. Um, starting off with Mighty Number no. 9, they unveiled a trailer, the, I believe the first trailer, um, and if you don't know what that is, that is the game that has been created by the Mega Man original creator, just not with Capcom. And it's pretty much Mega Man, just not called Mega Man. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like, it looks pretty damn cool, though. They're, they're, and it's also like, okay, so they, they did a few new things, but it really is, and he was saying, too, getting back to the roots of Mega Man, no less. Like, they've been doing 9 and 10 was already getting back to the roots of Mega Man. But this was... Updated art style, mm-hmm. um, some nicer graphics, right? But still, the 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 hardcore old Mega Man gameplay. Yeah, and, awesome. and the the beta opens actually today. Um, so if you paid eighty dollars into their Kickstarter, you have access to the beta. Or if you were at the conference, you have access to the beta. Now, I did watch the trailer, and it just looks awesome. Like you're like, it just makes you feel like everything you ever wanted Mega Man to do. It looks like Mighty Number no. Nine is gonna let you do it. They're going to give you all the power-ups from X series. They're going to give you all the bosses. You fight the bosses the same way. It's just, it looks like a fun game. I'm not a huge platformer, but I'm going to probably pick this game up when it comes. Yeah, honestly, out. I I love the Mega Man X series. I mean, later on it kind of got stupid, but the early Mega Man X games are are what I love, and I am big into to that style of game. Like, just get, throw that at me as much as you want, I'll I'll be good. So. So there you go. Yeah. Um. And then another big story coming out was people got some hands-on with the Order 1866 or 1886. It's one of those years. But uh, And this is a really cool game. This is actually a game I've been looking forward to for a long time. The graphics look amazing. Uh, it's a really cool story. I don't know how it's going to quite fit, but like you're, you're the legacy of the Knights of the Round Table and Nikola Tesla's in there helping you out and you're fighting like evil demons and stuff. And it got panned. Unfortunately, people got to play it, and they said the cover system was all right because it's pretty much a clone of the Gears of War cover system, but the AI was horrible. Uh, the visual is still awesome, but the controls didn't quite work well, and mm-hmm. that's a really, really discouraging thing because I really wanted this game to look good. Um, I was going to say, the AI is a problem. They could fix that up, but controls, if you don't have controls down, yeah, you can tighten them up, but that's... That might be if it's really bad. That might be a pretty big overhaul. To, yeah, could be a, to work that out. could be a game breaker. That's for sure. Yeah. So, unfortunately, that happened. Um, Dragon Age. Actually, this wasn't unveiled at PAX Prime, but they talked a lot about it at PAX Prime. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition will have a multiplayer, and Bioware is saying that it's going to be similar to Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. But instead of it kind of being an arena where you fight wave after wave, they're pretty much going to throw a dungeon, you're going to go in with a bunch of your friends, and you're just going to dungeon crawl. So it, that actually sounds like a lot of fun to me. Um, now, there will be cool ways to level up your characters. Your characters are not going to be the same from your single player to the multiplayer, but in the multiplayer, you can go dungeon crawl, get a bunch of loot, you get gold, you buy more items, you level up your character that way. And I think that's awesome because... Dragon Age Origins is one of my still one of my favorite games. I'm going to go out and say it right now. It is the greatest RPG for the Xbox 360 console. And there's a lot of good ones out there. But that one was my favorite. And a way to incorporate multiplayer into it is just awesome. Without detracting from the single player story. It's going to detract. You know it's going to. It's going to take it's not over. Going to detract. That's what it's the not... multiplayer does. Multiplayer it just, just over the whole extends thing. the game. That's all it's it's there for, and yeah. this sounds like it's going to extend it in a really fun yeah. way. It, it extended it for Halo, right? Well, that's I all I played was Halo. all the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, fine. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just going to add to it. But yeah. So, and then um, my last story from PAX Prime was Firewatch is a game they did the reveal trailer. This was actually revealed there. It looks really weird. 
So the premise of the game is you're sitting out in the Wyoming wilderness. You are a person who's in a tower watching out for wildfires, um, and you only have contact with one other person, and that is a woman that they allude to some sort of weird relationship with her. Uh, not a good relationship, obviously, but a weird relationship. And it just kind of shows you walking around the forest, and at one point he's like, "Is that?" F-? she's like, be careful, keep your eyes open. And he's like, should I be worried about something? And she doesn't say anything. Is that other fire that we were see, looking at close? She doesn't say anything. Should I be worried about something? Well, just keep your eyes open. Like, And that's how it ends. It's like trying to be, build suspense. It's supposed to be some sort of mystery. I'm trying to figure out where the mystery is, but we'll see more details. The mystery details. is about that fire. Is the fire coming or not? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so... Why won't that, you tell you? <laughs> that looks pretty cool. I mean, the graphics don't look great. I think it's going to be kind of more of an indie game that you can download. But, uh, you know, I mean, we've got to see more, but it interested me. How about that? It piqued my interest uh, just watching the first one. So... Mm-hmm. But what, what's, what did you like coming out of PAX? Um, well, I did see something I thought was kind of interesting because it's been a long time coming um, some... Well, not even a long time coming, but some 3K and 4K laptops. Now, this isn't a game, but it's something you would play games on because it's for gaming laptops. Certainly. And this is interesting to me because initially I was thinking, why do they need that? Second thought I I was thinking was, they don't have 1080p as standard on laptops yet. That's a pretty big jump. So that's been something people <laughs> You're skipping been a couple about. steps here. Yeah, I mean, in this, they should have 1080p a standard on most laptops by now, but it's not really. There's a lot out there that really they they just don't bother with that for laptops. Um, and though you could, like my phone does 1080p yeah, for mine some does reason, too. Um, but my laptop doesn't. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. But 4K, okay. Now here's the thing about 4K. It's designed for very big screens. It's designed mm-hmm. for... So you don't lose resolution benefit. when you blow up the picture that big, right? Yeah, exactly. It's for, like, 60-inch screens so that you can have those 60-inch screens in a smaller... in, in a closer environment without seeing, like, the pixelation or anything... or mm-hmm. distortion, right? So it still looks really good quality. So you might think, okay, are they giving us really big screens on these laptops? Not that I saw. Hmm. But here's the thing. You... The thing that makes it still beneficial, you're sitting really close to your laptop. You typically, some people might, you have like probably at most a few feet. It's usually with an arm length, right? Arm's length. Yeah. Exactly. You might be uh, like right now. I'm I don't know less than a foot away from the laptop I'm running this off of. So that's really close. So when you get closer and closer, that higher resolution makes a bigger difference even oh, okay. on a smaller screen. All right. So that's kind of cool to see. For one, it hopefully it's going to push everything to at least get 1080p on their screens. And second, now you got the, the 4K, the super high resolution for your games, even though I don't know of any games that actually give out 4K resolution. Yeah. It's yeah, comments down low if you know some that you can set to that. Well, maybe some of the new next generation systems might, but I don't even think they have the capability of that. Yeah, um, like the systems they keep talking about, like, oh, we were able, like, there was a game for the Xbox, they were, they were uh, saying that they could do 1080p, and then they found out it was really just up converting to 1080p, right? So, <laughs> for, um, and, like, that's one of the bragging things that the PS4 has been saying, like, oh, we have all this 1080p stuff, but, but they're not doing 4K, that's for sure. Mm-mm. Hardly Mm-mm. anything's doing 4K, but yeah, so maybe it's a little excessive still. Um, there are a few 4K videos out there that you can get, and I don't know. Maybe Crisis 4 is out there and doing 4K. <laughs> Crisis does like to break people's machines with how crazy they're... Yeah. But it, it does make but sense still. that... It does make sense for games especially that laptops would get it, because you're right. I mean, the consoles are already out. They're not going to be able to go and switch the hardware. But you could probably develop a game for 4K for the, the laptops. Yeah, and for this too... To, in order to go to this resolution, you obviously need an intense, intense system behind it to for the for the graphics. So, I saw those graphics cards. Um, they they look pretty sweet for a laptop, and it's like it's a two gigabyte RAM just on the the graphics card, wow. which is a fair amount, especially for a laptop. Just for the graphics card is what you're talking about. Yeah. though. you're not even talking yeah, about like memory for other memory. Yeah. 
Now, I'm guessing it, it definitely needs it for if it wants to actually do a 4K display. Uh, you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM in there, which I've built servers recently that have less than that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a good amount there. Yeah. So there, uh, and obviously the processor is great and everything else. Um, the one laptop anyway that I saw that was doing this definitely looked amazing. Probably overkill for most people, but it's is marketed at the high end guys and gamers really like to, even if it's useless, get the highest numbers. Yeah, um, yeah, I understand. It's, this, it's kind of like, be, hey, I got this this car and you yeah. don't. You know, it's just wave one up in each other. Hey, that's what yeah. we do. But still, it'll be interesting to see if now that this stuff is on the market, if some games will start utilizing it, if some people start utilizing these 4K displays a little bit more, um, and see what happens. So I thought yeah, that was so pretty maybe, cool. maybe this is a trend. So, yeah, that's cool. I do enjoy that. PAX Prime, like I said, nothing huge news, but some cool stuff that happened. But, you know, let us know what you thought about PAX Prime. Is there any stories that we missed? Uh, what do you think about some of the stories we talked about? Hit us up in comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter. <laughs> Where's My Face at gmail.com and Google Plus and Facebook. So it was a rocky show, but we got through it and we stopped and we started. And I don't know if it's going to hold on to both the stop and the start, but it might. Or maybe we'll just have half a show. And now I can't hear what Brendan's saying, because I think he turned off his mic because he was ca- coughing. I turned off your mic because you were coughing. And look, Jerk. he's crying now, too. <laughs> Put the camera back on. He's crying. He's crying. I see him. But, yeah, so I, as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, crying producer extraordinaire Brendan. Oh, <laughs> uh, and he can't. Yo. He didn't say anything. <laughs> Yo. Or dying, I should say now. <laughs> He's literally dying in front of your eyes. But yes, so we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Good night, everybody.